a little later. In 1976, a decree was enacted. A decree, of course, that has been a law since it was a military government. A law was enacted to create the Federal Capital Territory. Uh, and then eventually FCDA was created as well. Uh, let me read, in order to realize in order to realize the objective of, the de of developing Abuja, a new capital city into a masterpiece on the African continent, the federal government established the Federal Capital Development Authority as a sole agency vested with the res responsibility of planning, designing, and developing the new capital city. So then they set to work immediately. Uh, but before that, let me say a little bit more about the FCT. Let's go to page three. FCT as it is today, it has a population of 3.1 million. And we can see the other geographical features of FCT, lost vegetation, rich soil, rivers, hills, mountains, and forests. But what I want us to take out of this as engineers is that basically FCT has an undulating surface. That means you cannot generally describe FCD as a flat land. This is very important for our design. And this is one, one of the things they highlighted, the planners highlighted. They like about the terrain that it has an undulating surface, meaning we can be able to use the force of gravity. Uh, so we now move on. When FCDA came on board, the first thing the FCDA board did was to commission planners, design to provide a suitable master plan for the city. I can uh, the planners, as you know, are international planning associates. Now, the information I'm going to give about the planning of Abuja is all contained in a book that is already in the public domain. Uh, this is a book you can get from the planning department in FCD. Most of our senior engineers, of course, I'm sure they have copies. I have a copy. Um, and part of the reason for this lecture, uh, there is no way that within 40 minutes, one can be able to scratch in any way the Abuja master plan. But the purpose of this lecture is to encourage engineers to look for the master plan. Because if you are practicing in Abuja and you don't have an idea of the master plan, um, you will not understand what I'm saying until you know what the master plan is. I wouldn't want to say you are practicing blind, but it's sort of something like that. You need to understand what the master plan is all about because everything we're building in the city is implementation of the master plan uh, quickly so fcda commission master plan, uh, uh, planners they it's a conglomerate of different professionals but of course the planners took the lead there are engineers there are architects and they came up with a master plan for the city a suitable master plan for the city and that is a planning aspect of uh of what we are going to discuss. They, 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 they came up with a comprehensive urban and regional plan for the federal capital city. Then there are other planners within the outfit, but they came up with engineering designs. There were designs in transportation, foul and Where's wisdom? Wisdom. You have something I'm covering, I just might get for me. No, you read it. Your daddy. Please, can we all mute our, our, ourselves? Hello? Oh, right. 
Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. We can now, Engineer Gonads. Continue, please. Yeah, continue. Continue, sir. Hello? Engineer Gonads, continue. Hello, sir. Hello? Okay, so, sorry, there seems to be a problem with the connection. Um, uh, continue. We can hear you very loud and clear now, sir. Continue, sir. It's network. Hello, Engineer Gonad. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. I think I'm back now. Yeah, you're back. You're, you're back, sir. Okay. Good. Four? Yeah. Uh, so, as I, as I was saying, uh, okay, so I said uh, there, were, there were also part of the master plan also involved design for transportation, foul and storm water drainages, solid waste, water supply, electric power supply, telecommunication, district infrastructural uh, designs, which is still ongoing, uh, and then airport development and the satellite town development. Now, the most, uh, uh, the part of the engineering design that encompasses the rest of them all, of course, is the transportation engineering infrastructure. Um, what the planners try to do is to connect FCT to the national uh, major uh, trunk uh, routes. So uh, using the two coming from Suleja, no, from uh, Gwagwalada, the Joskefi Road, and then of course the road that goes to Kano and the Far North. They came up with, a, with a, a regional plan and then an urban plan, road network for the city. I, I'm reading the slide now. The transportation master plan for FCT provides for road network, light rail, and airport development for local and international flights. Uh, Engineer Uche. Sir. I can hear you, sir. I'm with you, sir. Engineer Uche. I can hear you, sir. I'm with you, sir. Uh, can, I, can I make reference to a... Yes, can I make reference to the transportation drawing on my laptop so that we can, because as I mentioned in the road, it is important that we point to some of them. Okay, it's on the screen, sir. Can I make reference to the drawing on my laptop? I'll be able to. Okay, go on. I will work on it on the background. On my desktop. It, okay, we'll do that. I sir. know there's something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yes, but I may have to have it enlarged. Can you? Can you enlarge it, please? Can you enlarge it, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, um, basically, uh, the main regional roads in FCT go with the acronym FCT. As you can see from the drawing, 105, 106. Uh, the most popular sort of the two is 105 and 106. 105 starts from the southern part and goes up towards the northern part. That's from the bottom of the drawing to the top of the drawing. You see it in red. Then 106 cut across from west to east. As a matter of fact, it's the only prominent road about the middle of the drawing. So they, they sort of divided the city in a way that the transportation will be seamless. And all these FCT 106 roads, uh, they have status of uh, expressways. So there are big roads uh, so that they can be able to carry traffic. There are other regional roads take you to the area councils. Now that brings us to a quick one. I, I want to say something about the FCT as well. For reason of administration, the FCT was now divided into six area councils, which is the equivalent of local governments. I'm just mentioning this information. I'm sure there are things we know. 
So these regional roads also connect this, the headquarters of these area councils to the main city itself. Um, one, the most prominent road when they were planning is actually uh, uh, the A2. When the A2 was completed, the planners were comfortable. The A2 is a road that passes Guagualada uh, 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 to Zuba. So that became like a focal point. Because as you come to know, uh, the builders of Abuja, the first FCDA offices had to be sited in Suleja. Uh, it's called Field Base. Uh, these are histories. I'll come to that. It is from there, it was a virgin land. There were population of the locals living here and there. So that is the idea. I suggest that you take time and study the regional uh, layout of road networks because it formed the basis of. Uh, of, of the transportation network of the city. And then two most important things that the planners did is to um, sort of divide Abuja into the area they call the federal capital city, that's the FCC, and then the regional part of the city. The FCC, federal capital city, is supposed to be the main seat of power. Uh, Uche, can you see my cursor? Yes. Engineer, are you there? Can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Now, the FCC, the way the planners did it, they, this is my cursor here. This is my cursor. Yes, we can now, see. Now, the FCC, the FCC, what the planners did was to begin the city in front of the Aso, v, Aso Rock, or as well Aso Hills. So right in front of it, they now place the three arm zone. Then they then they belt out the city. They belt out the city in what they call faces. Why? Of course, faces is what it means. Uh, it's the literal meaning of faces. They belt the city in the faces so that when they are able to conclude a phase to an extent, we can now be able to start using it. So they divided the FCC, which I'm trying to show you the boundary. But please note the name FCC. I'm trying to go around the FCC with my cursor. It's quite a large area. Uh, it starts from, for those of us that live in Abuja, if you know the three arm zone, that is where the presidential villa is. Or if you know Onyx, which is behind it, it starts from there up to, say, the airport. So that is that is the span and the extent of the FCC. Within that layout, we have phase one, two, three, four, and five. Move away from the drawing. Hello? We can hear you, sir. We are not seeing the drawings. The city gets ah. ah. So the FCC is divided into. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me speak. Let me yeah. speak. Just yeah, leave the drawing out. Let me speak, please. OK. OK. So uh, the FCC. Uh, So the FCC is, uh, is divided into five phases. Phase one of FCC, if I may describe it, it began, as I said, from the presidential villa. And um, if you know the line of Ring Road 1, Ring Road 1 today is Namdi Azikiwewe. So it starts from what we call Tipa Garage around Outer Northern Expressway. That is the road to Kubwa. And it terminates somewhere um, at the junction of the bridge, if you are going to go to Apo on your right, it's quite a big highway. It's a 10 lane highway, 5 2 and 5 4. So that is the extent of the first phase. When Babangida came and, and the government needed to move to Abuja, they quickly developed Garki, 
uh, and then the areas of Asokoro, as we know, he even moved in before the presidential uh, uh, and then eventually, so they tried to finish the phase one of the city and then they moved in. We are now somewhere around phase three. Let us move to quickly to the stormwater drainage system. If you look at the geography of Abuja very well, uh, there is a mountain range running from, if you know the city very well, if you start Onyx, uh, that is starting from Zuba, from Zuba Junction into Abuja, if you are coming in, your left-hand side seems to be a mountain range. You continue along Onyx, you continue along Onyx, when you now come to the, uh, behind the presidential villa, continue to Apo, you seem to have a mountain range on your left. The city by geography seems to flow from that mountain down towards Wawalada, down to Lokoja. Of course, we know the Lokoja has the river Niger and the Benue, the confluence of Niger and Benue. So that has to be a very low, low valley. That seems to be the general flow of the storm water of the city. And the designers make good use of that. Uh, they make sure that all they are directed into the river channels. The basic idea behind the storm drainage design of Abuja. Uh, the storm water uh, uh, drainage system, starting from the from the source, usually into the gully ports for the districts, it will be collected under the highway, connected to larger pipes, and it will pour into the water into the river channels. Of course, as I said, the rivers do the rest. Um, then the foul water drainage system. What they did is, uh, are we on page seven now of this slide? Please, can you share the slide? We are not seeing the slide. Thank you. Hello? Please, can you share the slide? We are not seeing the slide. Pa page seven, please. Uh, no, uh, engineer, go not, engineer, go not, please. We I can share. Yeah, we cannot see the slide. Hello? Okay, let me share from I, I my thought, end. I thought okay. the moderator is sharing it. Okay, okay let, let me share it. I, I allow you to share those maps. Um, okay. Can we see it now? I've, I've started sharing it. Please, uh, page, page seven. Okay, sir. In the screen now. Okay, sir, page seven. Just hold on. Page seven, page seven. Okay. Just hold on. Yeah, we can see. It. Page seven. We can see it now. Okay, this we is page seven. We're on page seven, sir. We're on page seven. Continue, sir. You page see a storm water drainage system. Power right. water drainage system. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And also Perfect. So let me read. Let me read the foul water drainage system. Go ahead, sir. It says the Abuja Sewage Master Plan. A comment, please. Please check the power of your laptop. The Abuja sewage master plan provides for the development of six main sewage treatment plants. Chairman, did you get my point? The power Hello? of the laptop is still run out, please. Please check it. Can I continue, please? Yeah, I'm going to continue. continue, please. But check your laptop continue. power if it is running down, sir. From observation, go ahead, sir. Hello, can I continue? Continue, sir. Yes. Yes, continue. Continue, sir. That is, that is my laptop. As if uh -huh. No. No, it's not running down. Okay. It's go not ahead. running down. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. It's go not running down. Go ahead, sir. Now, go ahead, sir. the Abuja Mas sewage, sewage Master Plan provides for the development of six main sewage treatment plants and inter interceptor sewer lines. They are called Schedule 1 to 10. Uh, we will come to that, which collects liquid waste from secondary lines within the district to convey by gravity. I want us to underline the word gravity. Underline the word gravity. 
uh -huh. gravity to whooper main sewage treatment plant. The capacity is 700,000 population equivalent, that's PE capacity. Uh, the, uh, right now, operational whooper treatment plant it has been completed and is operational. Uh, but the most important thing uh, for, for us as engineers is the last sentence there. Four natural drainage basins exist, namely River Javi, It seems the audio has gone away again. I was wondering. There seems to be an audio loss. Yeah, engineer Donald, can we can can you check your network connection? Engineer Donald. I'm back now. Yeah, you are back, sir. Continue, sir. Please you are back. Continue. Your voice is clear. Mm. Continue. Continue. Yeah. Hello, my chairman. We can yes. hear you, sir. Continue. continue. I'm back. I I must I must really say the experience is the experience is tough, but let me continue. <laughs> so as I was saying, the four natural drainage basins that exist, uh, as the engineer saw it, was in Ribajabi, uh, uh, which Cover schedule one to eight river Wasika, river Usuma, and then river Uye, out of where basically uh, the water drains to. Of course, the direction of the water is also the direction of the sewer. The sewer, uh, the sewage uh, uh, interceptor lines were placed along the river valleys. Not all mm. of them have been built, I think about four only have been built. The, the interceptor sewer lines, and they are enough for now to serve uh, the need of the city with regards to the phases that we have developed. Um, but the key point I want to raise for you as engineers, if you get this slide, increasingly you will see that the, the, the designers of, of, of this infrastructure use gravity. And as we may come to know, for those of us that are involved in sewage design, um, as much as sewage flow by gravity is too flat, if I may use that word, there's a percentage uh, uh, that will allow basically the liquid not to be separated from the solid. Mm. And that mm. is where they stay. And that is part of the difficulty of sewage design. Mm. Uh, storm water design is a bit easier because all you need to do is to discharge it to the river around. So you will come to see that. I think that's all I want to say about uh, the foul water drainage system. With the slide, and as you continue to look at the topic, I'm sure you will. Your voice is off, sir. Engineer Gunnar. Engineer Uche. Sir, I can hear you, sir. I'm here, sir. I'm, I'm available, yeah. sir. Can we, can we private chat, Engineer Gunnar, and know the, challenge. the challenges? Yeah, the challenges is have in place. Right away. Yeah, Vice, Vice can you do that? Engineer Abdi Abdul Malik. So while we are waiting for 
uh, the lecturer to get on with his network. I think um, it's not really that we are discussing the paper already, but um, like the lecturer said, that uh, there are people who's, who at the tip of their fingers can tell the story of Abuja. Engineer, the lecturer today, Engineer Gonat, is one of the young and upcoming ones who uh, is positioning himself to, to continue from where the elders stopped. And I know yes, Engineer, Engineer Shibo is here, Engineer, our past president, Engineer. Uh, Mukoli is here, Engineer Banefo is here, Engineer Shibo. These are people, Engineer Nosapo, these are people that wake them up uh, from sleep. They will tell you the story without referring to any, um, any book. They will tell you the story. So uh, I believe we give enough time for them to tell us a little bit of uh, what my Igbo people will say to lick the mouth of the lecturer so that uh, we will all be situated properly. While we are, we are waiting for the lecturer to get, I don't know, let me know breath protocol. Engineer Bane Fosa. Engineer Bane can uh, Engineer Uche, can you unmute Engineer Bane Fosa? Yes, Engineer Bane Fosa. On one. Sir, can you direct who will uh, step in and uh, and uh, and start telling us the story from the from the mouth of the people that uh, saw it from the beginning? Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I hope you are hearing me. Yes, yes sir. sir. Very clear, Very. sir. The problem I'm having. There's nothing wrong with the master plan. Our problem is the implementation of the master plan. And people who come in as head of the FCC, that means the ministers have no idea what the master plan is all about. Some were saying we don't have money to implement. Therefore, we should sell land because government has no, uh, can't have the resources. In the process, we messed up. Could you believe that all the land uh, uh, set aside for the FCC has all been allocated? And yet, we haven't done even 10% of the physical infrastructure because it is the infrastructure that makes a city. Buildings are secondary. Like the lecturer is talking about um, storm water, sewage, electricity, road networks. These are the core things that make a city. And that's what the planning and design of the master plan is all about. Buildings, you can put up your own building today. In 10 years time, maybe your children don't like the design, 
they can knock it down and rebuild. But the infrastructure, there's nothing you can do about that. You come and find a road, or the road is built, and we keep on messing up the arteries that were in the master plan. We started to build them in phases. Now, you have buildings within the right of way. Take, for example, around Geriki by UTC and the school, the hospital there, the right of way for the light rail has all been built on. And you're going to have problem. Then we keep on, as you people say these days, cut and paste. And you can never then get the jigsaw to fit. And because the master plan has been agreed on, is to expand it. And the expansion is in the execution, the implementation. That's why we fall down. You take, for example, the lecturer is talking from the ASO Hill to Namgaz Kiwe Ring Road 1. Now, with the experience of Ring Road 1, uh, Phase 1, we now want to uh, use that, make certain corrections, and go between Phase 1 and go into Phase 2. That is between Ring Road 1 and Ring Road 2. Already, we have having distortion. And how can you move on from phase two and then develop, for example, the centenary city? You, from the beginning, you start distorting the master plan. Even if you take... Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. We are with you. So uh, let me stop there because I have other colleagues there. Yes. Let them chip in a bit. Maybe the only thing I want to ask you and the NAC Abuja branch to go to the minister and the PAMSEC, they should. Uh, expand this meeting about the overview of the master plan where everybody can come together and talk about this openly mm -hmm. and whatever mistakes or corrections has to be taken into consideration. We are talking about rail lines and things like that. The light rail, the uh, major rail lines. Yet, the, tra the transportation center, which was provided for, is nowhere to be considered anymore. They are uh, trying to allocate houses there. Even your uh, church gate, uh, World Trade Center, it's not supposed to be there. Those are the transport lines. Okay. So thank, thank you, my chair. I don't want to get carried away because I'm <laughs> very <laughs> sentimental about the Abuja Master Plan. Okay, sir. But thank, thank you, you sir. Um,
engineer chief boy is preparing to give up my and uh, a member of the board of trustees of uh, NSC, engineer UJ Jiprin, O O N F N S C. You are welcome, sir. I will uh, equally welcome engineer Nina Briggs from Lagos. No, sorry, architect Nina Briggs from Lagos. Architect, welcome, sir. I will equally welcome engineer C S S A. Sorry, I'm actually from a. I'm actually from Abuja. I'm oh. actually from Abuja. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. What I saw in your in your identification is Lego. So welcome, sir. Um, architect CSS, a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. You are welcome, sir. Dr. Ekwan, I've earlier recognized you. Engineer Timothy Shakarao, welcome, sir. Um, I can see NSC Buari branch. Is it my brother Sherman, engineer Daudu, uh, engineer Musa Dauda? Are you the one? Oh, okay, that is true. I'm my the one, thank you. Yeah, my brother Sherman from Buari. We are welcome, sir. Thank I want, you. I want to welcome our ladies in the house, engineer Linda Beatrice, engineer Bridget Damjo. Engineer Yetunde Aleda Eto, the secretary of the branch. I want to welcome Engineer. Who are you? Ulusegun Adewuyi. Ulusegun. Engineer eh? Abdul Kadir Alaji Sani from Kanu, all the way from Kanu. Welcome, sir. Um, engineer ATA Amusa, uh, and my brother from another mother. Where are you? Can we recognize you? Oh. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well done, sir. So we have uh, Engineer Suleiman M. Lawa. You are there, sir. So having yes. the, the uh, thank you, Tim. Okay. The recognition will continue, but let's pause and have Engineer C. N. Shibo to tell us one or two things. After that, we have Engineer our past president, engineer A. O. Mukolo. Welcome, sir. Engineer C. N. Shibo, sir. Oh, my chairman. Sir. I can hear you now, sir. OK, sir. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, OK, sorry. The guest lecturer is back. So let's continue with the lecture. Then thereafter, we we'll go back to the elders. Thank you. Engineer Gonat. All right. Thank you. So I, I stopped at uh, solid waste develop, uh, development system. Yes. Uh, of course, we know uh, we humans generate solid waste. The master planners envisaged that, and they created two, uh, two sites for treatment of solid waste, one for the northern and the other for the southern part of the city. There's a uh, there's a solid waste disposal site in Abuja shown on the next day. One that is operational now is in Goza. Goza, uh, on the way to the airport by your right, mm. uh, you, 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 then the road is off to, to, to the Goza site. It's quite active. Uh, the plan consists the development of an engineered sanitary landfill and other activities to handle the disposal of the city waste with various transfer stations to be located within the districts or the sector centers of the city. So, um, so basically you have transfer stations within the districts or the sector centers where solid waste will be collected. We have seen AUTD. So Abuja uh, have been issued, as you say, as a good plan for the collection of solid waste. I think we'll go to the plan itself. Of course, we'll get all the Water supply. Uh, this is uh, water supply. The planners try to source their water, of course, from the rivers around. The biggest river in FCT uh, is the Burara River. It runs, it forms the border of uh, the, the, the area council today we call uh, Abaji. It runs from Northern part of the FCT down to the south. Uh, 
uh, then there's also River Usuma and other rivers. The planners decided to dam River Usuma, uh, where they call the Lower Usuma Dam. If you are going to Buari from Juse Alaji, as you climb the hill by your right, you see the Lower Usuma Dam. Uh, the Usuma Dam. The idea again is gravity. The idea again is gravity. Lower Usuma Dam is on a very high plateau and the city is down. So you can be able to, by gravity, supply the city with water. That is uh, the idea I want to keep re uh, re echoing. Every good design try to uh, produce a system that seemingly works, a system that doesn't need much of much maintenance, and that is what this is. Uh, of course, for water you cannot use booster. You cannot use booster systems to boost the water with booster pumps. But basically. Uh, let's read through our slide. The Abuja Master Plan provides for sourcing and impounding of raw water no, at, the lower, at, at the lower Usuma Dam, augmented by Gurara Dam interbasin transfer. We treatment there 12 modules of water treatment plants. That is what the master plan provided. Each of the plants, each of the treatment plants at, the Upa, uh, at uh, Usuma Dam should be able to treat. 5,000 cubic meter per hour. Now, this will then be conveyed through a trunk line to storage reservoirs that they call tanks 1 n And they use various loops within the city. Uh, we have loops 1 to 10 to supply water now to the district. You will see all of it in the next uh, in the next uh, on your drawing, you see it. You can see Usuma Dam on your on your left, and then you now see see the tanks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I know that two, three, four, five, five are completed. One and six are ongoing construction is ongoing, and the rest are in design process. Uh, but currently. The problem of Abuja, the water that we have can serve the city. Part of the problem is the connection or waste and all that. But by and large, water supply within the city is not, is not, is not bad. So again, the completion of these facilities will be done as the phases are completed. And this is another ingenuity we can see from the master planners. They did it in such a way that you don't expect government to have money to build all these tanks within the same period, finish all the loops. So as a designer, you have to kind of face what you do. Uh, because as the client starts using uh, the facility, of course, it becomes easier for them to pay for the next one. So that is uh, another idea behind these designs. So we can now move on quickly. Electric power supply. That would be 12. Electric power supply. The idea of the designers is to get power, that is the 330 kV, to three, trans, three main transmission stations for the city. They call one the Nord Mains. The Nord Mains has been built, has been completed. It's at uh, the junction of um, Ring Road 1 and Onet. That's at Katampe. I'm sure if you're going down, you take life to go to Kuba, you see the, the transmission station. And then the second one is East Mains. It's, lo it's located at Apo. Uh, it's somewhat completed, but it cannot take 330 kV today. But that is the overall idea, eventually. Then, uh, work has begun on the West Mains at Lube. I think it's near Obasanjo um, Space Center. Mm. So these are the three main sites that will receive 330 kV power into the city. And then they are looped, as electrical engineers will call it. They are looped so that uh, if you have problem on one uh, one of the transition stations, transmission uh, transmission station, you can be able to get power from the other. Um, after that, we now have they, they have proposed 13, 18 mm -hmm. numbers 
132 slash TV transmission stations for phase one to three. Uh, these transmission stations will now take power from the main transmission stations at the northeast and west sides. One of them is, um, let me see how I can describe it. One of them is opposite, somewhat opposite Benway House. That is one of them. Yeah. They are hidden in the city somewhere. If you relate with the electrical engineers, you'll be able to see some of them, the location of some. And then- probably see, see one by the mosque, by the national mosque there. Okay, thank you, my, thank you, thank you, my, thank you, thank you, my Oga. That is Indira Jato. Uh, I actually appeal to him to join the discussion because I'm a civil engineer, not an electrical engineer. I will prefer someone to keep chipping in. Um, then we now have what uh, the designers call injection substations for the districts. It's a compact system. It's different from the transformers we have in our states. It's compact, it's, uh, it doesn't need actually any serious uh, cover. Uh, they are your normal transformers that you have on the streets. They, they take the 33, um, they take the 11 kV uh, uh, power and they will now- Step it down. Oh, sorry. Step it down. 33, yes. The 33 kV uh, substations are not on the streets. You see the buildings, um, they are located in every district. And as based on the consumption of each district, they determine the number of the injection substations you need. The injection substations, they, they, are, they are buildings most probably of, most of the times occupied by PHC. They are all over, they have a gate roof design, sort of. And in Ajato, they are painted, I think, male color. I'm not. Yeah, right. it's AED, they are AEDC, and they paint it to their colors now. Actually, okay. you have them in different districts, each district based on their, just as you said, based on the designs. Some will have two by, two by 15 MBA, three by 15 MBA. In some districts, like my Tama, we said to have two of them. So, so it's right. designed in every district. Go ahead, please. Uh, well, basically, what they are supposed to do is to step the power down from 33 to 11 kV. KV. Now, then they will now transpire to the, to the streets now, to the compact unit transformers. And that's what I was trying to describe. It's a compact unit transformer. It's a whole system. It's packaged like our, like our soundproof generators. So power goes there. Right. And I want to say something. The moment power comes to, to that, to that uh, compact transformer, all the cables now go underground with the industry. That is what is unique about Abuja designs. We are going to discuss more of that when we come to uh, infrastructure. Uh, also, we have 33 kV overhead lines to supply power to the area council headquarters and villages around. So those are regional areas. Uh, telecommunication is fast evolving. When Abuja was designed, uh, then there were no GSM and, and all that. So, uh, what we have for telecom usually now are service docks. And then those service docks are leased to our telecom companies to lay their cables. Uh, they are actually supposed to remit some revenue back to government. What I mean by telecom dogs, they are crossings on the road so that they don't have to cut our roads so they can easily pass their cables. Usually they lay the cables uh, outside beyond the walkway so they don't have to or diverge, so they don't have to destroy the existing uh, infrastructure. And then when they get to crossings, they will use the telecom crossings. So basically that is the overall idea of telecom. Of course, there are sites where we have masks. And, um, that is what this city may have to do a bit better. We need to have sites for mass. You can see mass in people's compounds. And the kind of problem with telecom, it is evolving. It evolves too fast. So uh, I'm sure tomorrow someone may come with the technology and tell us we don't have to use all these mass again. I, I don't have a doubt in my mind. That will happen. So let's proceed. Now, I want to single out the airport with regards to transportation. Uh, the transportation facility we have in the city, we don't have two, in the master plan, we have two efforts that are proposed for the city. One is the one we know in existence today, which is 40 kilometers away from the city. It, is, it has been named uh, after uh, uh, Nambia Sikiwe International Airport. That's the official name of the airport. Uh, 
But the master plan also provides for another airport in Abaji. Of course, it's a good idea. Should something go wrong with the airport we have, or we have to do some work on it, we have an alternative. As you know, about two years ago, we had to move to Kaduna to fly into Abuja because of the renovation works. So eventually, I'm sure this airport will come up and uh, we will not have to go to, uh, to the neighboring cities if we have to fly into Abuja. Should we need to renovate the international airport uh, that is currently operational? So that is about the airport infrastructure development. Airport infrastructure development is sort of a public building, but it's also serviced with very infrastructure, sort of like that of a, of a district as well. When I discuss that of the district, I'm sure we're able to tie it up quickly. That one, I'll see about the district engineering infrastructure. Now, that's what is most interesting about Abuja infrastructure. As I said, the Abuja Master Plan provides for the development of the federal capital city into five phases, phases one, two, three, four, and five. If you get the master plan, you'll see the phases. And the master planners also envisage the population growth, uh, the population and some sort of growth that will take place as time went. So each of the phases had a projection. Uh, the districts basically are located on the mm. northern and on the southern part of the central area. So the central area is the core. It's called the civic center. Um, this, the, the, the central area, in the middle of it, of course, is the Umari Adarua way that we know today. But it is bounded by, uh, I think it was called Independence Avenue and then uh, Constitutional Road. The, the road the president go to the airport and return home from. All that you have in between is the central area. Uh, very recently, uh, they keep uh, improving the design. There are other planners that are brought in to further design, not improve, further design it. Because the design has not been completed when the master plan, that's IPA. I think they are called international. The IPA basically are the main planners. So increasingly, as the city moves towards the airport, we get more further designs and, and, and we proceed that way. Now, the district, very important, it has an integrated infrastructural facility. Integrated in the sense that they work in tandem. Uh, and they were designed all together and built at the same time. Uh, the road networks are there, and then the underground system services. The underground services include power and stormwater drainages, water supply, street lights and power supply, and then telecom. Underground, meaning they are under the ground, actually. So um, the foul and stormwater drainages are sewer pipes. They are under the ground. Um, if we get the cross-section, the typical cross-section of our roads, we have different category of roads, of course. Uh, we have the primary roads. The primary roads are the expressways and the arterial roads. The arterial roads are the roads that bring traffic from the expressways into the districts. And they also interlinked districts. And that is one thing that is unique about Abuja. The districts are linked. So uh, it's different from our, our cities. In just I live in a place uh, called Ukubaru, I grew up there. If I have to go to town, I have to use the same road back. But in Abuja, you don't have to. You can go around to another district. So that if there's any problem on this road, you can find an alternative route. Most of us will agree that our towns in our towns most of the towns are connected by only one, one way. So that is what is also unique about Abuja design. Uh, under the road networks, we have what we call the service zones. Within the city, let me continue from arterial. So after the arterial, we now have the secondary roads, which are the important local streets and the collectors. Uh, or the collectors and then important local streets. So the collectors collect traffic from the arterial roads to the important local streets. And then, of course, we have the tertiary, the minor access roads, and the, and, and, and the local streets. Now, these are different grades of roads. And the way the designers did it, they sort of work from the answer to the back to the question. So we know usually if you are designing road, when you have a layout, you have an existing road that people are using. As an engineer, you now get your highway design uh, capacity manual. 
you determine the size of the road that will befit the settlement. But what the designers did is, they have come up with a kind of an idea of a number of uh, residences or businesses that will put traffic back to a minor access road. Then they make sure that they carve out the layout so that that minor access road will serve only those, and they walked it back. So if you look at Abuja design, it, it, has been, it was typified by the idea. So minor access roads served into the local streets or into the important local streets, into the collectors, into the arterial roads, then into the express roads. So building Abuja became a bit easier. So you don't find us continually designing the capacity of the world because we walk from the answer back to the question. That is my own. Um, so as I'm saying, under each of these roads, that is from important local streets, to local streets, to minor access roads, we now have what we call service zones. Under, at the base of the service zones, you now have the waste, uh, foul water. Then above that, I'm trying to get to, um, I wish I could get to my, uh, Can I get to my screen? Okay, let me just speak from. Go ahead, sir. Now, you have different zones, basically. At the top of the zone, you now have the electric uh, power supply. Of course, the whole idea is this. Power water is at the base, because uh, you will not, then after it is storm water, then you will not have water supply. Then you have power at the top. So. Of course, you know, power is so good to mix power with water, so they put it at the top. Um, it's also not good to mix foul water with your normal water supply or your storm water, so you put them deep down. There are some districts that have uh, the foul uh, water uh, drainage system going as deep as five meters. So, and then they are connected from the district, connected and connected to the interceptor sewer line along a river valley. Um, which will now, of course, take it to our treatment plants. So basically, Mr. Chairman, that is the design of the districts. Quickly, we have the satellite town uh, engineering infrastructure. I'll just read through that. The Abuja Master Plan provides for the development of satellite towns alongside the development of the city. Uh, developing the satellite town by providing infrastructural facilities, providing a better environment through the provision of basic amenities and to ensure clean and green environment within the satellite towns in collaboration with the area councils, to provide infrastructural facility for the relocation and settlement scheme within the satellite town. The idea of the satellite town, of course, is to absorb the pressure of the city. You cannot have a, a, a situation where you have a big city. You know, people tend to live based on the way they earn money and all that. That is the reality of life. So the satellite towns are meant to serve the main city itself. Now, our popular satellite towns are Kubo. Um, as you go, uh, we now have uh, Buari. So those are our satellite towns. They are supposed to cushion uh, and support the, the city. Um, and then uh, they are also supposed to have engineering infrastructure, but by grade is not us. As, as high as that within the federal capital city. For example, the federal capital city have underground uh, drainage system. They have open drainage systems. But there's nothing wrong about that. Uh, it takes development quicker to people. It's cheaper and I will live there. Now, another role that FCD, uh, FCD performs is the role of public building and mass housing. Now, public buildings are what they are, presidential villa, Buildings that serve the public, not individual interests or individual businesses, like your fire stations, the federal secretariat, the national assembly, the Supreme Court, the, our courts, library, district libraries. So FCDA also is having the responsibility of building this uh, edifice. And they're usually supposed to be big edifice. National assembly, uh, those are, those are, and the planners actually gave the architectural sketch of those public buildings. So part of the duty of FCD is to provide public buildings as well. And then the mass housing scheme, 
uh, in order to take houses uh, to, to people uh, as quick as possible, government decided to introduce a PPP uh, package that is public-private partnership. People can easily quickly mm. source for money and, and build, have houses in mass for, for people to, to buy. To mortgage or they can buy outright. So these are basically the function of uh, FCDA with regards to the Abuja Master Plan. I hope I've not left anything out, Mr. Chairman. Not at all. Um, if I if I have, I uh, I'm sure my senior colleagues can quickly fill in. So thank you uh, for for the patience. Thank you, my Chairman. Yeah. Okay. I. You, you have not left anything untouched, but the only thing is that it is uh, <laughs> what, what the CNN will say, developing story. So what we have just done is to scratch here and there, and uh, the work is in progress. Like um, I said, before Engineer Shibu and other senior colleagues come on board, I want to welcome Engineer Asukwa Ekwo, FNSE, Engineer Oliver Eze, the technical secretary of the, the financial secretary of the branch, uh, my brother and friend and colleague, Engineer Abdul Karim Jato, FNSC, Engineer MT Bawa, Engineer Ben Osioko, the VI, the S official of the branch, the as constant as the Northern Star Engineer Bennett Oswala. You've been very regular with us these days. I know it's because of the your COVID. Thank you, sir. Then uh, the mama in the house, where is she? I can't see her photo. I can't see her video. Engineer E. A. Orisha, where are you? Engineer E. A. Orisha, I can't see you. And where are and where are your sisters? Engineer New Soro and Engineer Abueraba. All of you have been missing in action for some time now. So, can I, um, Engineer Chibo, sir? Can you tell us something? I hope he is still around. Engineer C. N. Shibo. Oh, okay, he's there. Please, can you unmute yourself? Uh, no, Engineer Shibo, please unmute yourself first so that we can hear you. Go to the yes, okay. No, unmute again. No, sir. Yes, okay. That's okay. Ah, it's okay. No, you are muting and unmuting at the same time. Hello, it's okay. okay. We can hear you. Yeah, sir. we can hear you. We can hear you, you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, the house. I would like you, please, you not know, to help me thank my boss, Engineer Banefo. for. He has been the person you know, behind my success, I can say, because he slows me down. I've been restive, very, very restive, right from the time I entered you know, uh, the, uh, the authorities' uh, um, employment. He has already taken off me the problems of you know, discussing the issue of um, what we've done and what we have not done. The politicians you know, have given us a lot of you know, problem in our future development. The master plan is well done, but then intervention from the politicians have been so heavy that you know, we could not continue as planned. I give one example. Abuja development is you know, mainly you no know, project driven, nothing about you no know, performance driven. But performance, I said after building the infrastructure, how do you manage it? Uh, we've gone so far, Abuja, you know, uh, LCT has done so very well. Um, I have a list of, you know, things that, you know, the lecturer discussed. One is the, you know, design brief. The other one is depots. The other one is transportation center, which my boss has addressed earlier. The interchange centers, um, district centers, Wuse market, 
foundations in Abuja, tiles and titles, stage development, public buildings, and public transportation. Unfortunately, the politicians did not allow us you know, to have public transportation unit right from inception. So it was during Aerofire that you know, this came on board, running behind schedule. A lot of you know, damages have been done, particularly in central area. 